Hi guys, interesting stuff today. The eruption hasn't slowed down. The Swartzingi power plant had to be evacuated. And I've got another report from someone who was at the Blue Lagoon at the time of evacuation. So stay tuned, it's going to be a good one and we will start that video right now. Hi everyone, so the eruption is still ongoing and uh, up until March 18th on Monday, it hasn't really slowed down from the previous day. So, and if you look at the live streams, it's still quite active. In my opinion, it's more active than previous eruptions after that time that has passed from the start of the eruption until like now. So that is definitely very interesting. And the Icelandic Met Office has also released some updates. Um, I'd like you to look at that map because that is really, really interesting. It shows the current lava flow and where it flows and basically shows how it's flowing. So it gives a good indication. They have two satellite images and one image was taken on March 17th at 1.55, that's the one in orange color, so 1.55 a.m. And uh, that's about five and a half hours after the eruption began. And look at how far it has spread out already. And then the second picture was taken at 3.56 p.m. on March 17th. And there you see the red. So you see how much it then flow did, um, I always say flowed. No, it flowed. Sorry, guys, I keep forgetting that. It's for some reason in my head. Of course, the lava's not flow flying, it's flowing, so it flowed. So the red tip, the southern tip, that's the most interesting area. And of course, in the west, the red tip that is reaching Swartzengi. And as you can see, the purple lava flow, that's the previous lava flows. And you can see, if you look at the Swartzengi area, you can see the purple areas. That's the last lava flow from the last eruption. And it did cross over the hot water pipelines that supplies heat and hot water to the southern uh, Reykjanes Peninsula. So this time it's almost there, right? Um, on that picture. And then we see the southern tip. Um, and that, they're, they're thinking, will it reach the road? Will it cross the road? Will it be able to, to flow into the sea? And uh, we don't know yet. It looks like it's not super, super likely, but it is quite a lava flow, that I have to say. And uh, what the Met Office has also done, they have a new risk assessment map. And you can see that they have changed the zone five from red to orange. They're saying the updated risk assessment map takes effect today and it's only valid for two days. And the activity of the eruption as of today, that's what they're saying, is quite stable since yesterday, since the afternoon of yesterday. And uh, But the lava tongue, there's slow movement. It's moving slow towards Sudur Stranda Vigor. That's the road that we're worried about. Because the eruption is still ongoing, of course, that's why on this new risk assessment map, the risks are still very, very high in the Sudnuka Crater series. That's the purple area. That's where the fissure is. That's where the eruption is taking place. And then, of course, in the areas where the lava is flowing, that's Grindavik. That's the Swartzengi area where the Blue Lagoon and the power plant are located and a little bit east um, of that. And what is happening at the moment, they're assessing the risk and it's very high in Swartzengi due to gas contamination as well. So they have to look at wind direction, volcanic gases. So same applies to Grindavik, volcanic gases. So also they are mentioning that again, there's also the crack collapse risk in, in Grindavik, the risk of falling into cracks and crack movements or sudden sinkholes forming and cracks widening. Plus, Grindavik has the risk of lava flow and gas contamination. So basically, poor Grindavik is getting it all. And guys, since we're in the middle of the video, could you do me a favor and leave this video a like and watch it till the end? There's good stuff still coming. Thank you. And let's continue. 
So why they're saying the risk is higher in zone one than in zone five is just simply the distance from the active end of the eruption. Also regarding the gas distribution forecast, they will have to see what the weather forecast is for the, that specific area. Right now, we still seeing an eruption in two areas of the fissure in several vents, but it seems that the vents that have been at the northern end of the fissure have stopped spitting out um, lava. So the most active craters are at the south end of the crater that has opened Saturday evening. And from there, there is lava flow to the south towards Sudor Standa Vigua. And uh, as of the morning of Monday the 18th, it was about 330 meters um, to the road, from the edge of the lava to the road. And then they said that edge has moved forward a little compared to last night. And then they also said that uh, <clears throat> they're there's not much movement in the lava area that has crossed Grindavico Vigua, the road in the Swartsengi area on Sunday night. So there doesn't seem to be a fast moving anymore. So they're thinking that that orange plus the red area, that that lava area has reached a size of 5.85 square kilometers in size. That's also based on a satellite image that has been taken yesterday at 3 p.m. So probably by today it is a little larger. They will do a new measurement flight later on Monday. So as it's Monday here where I am and it's already um, dark in Iceland. So that flight has taken place already. And so we're waiting for the results of that flight. Then they have released another picture that is how the eruption looked from afar in the morning around 8 45 and uh, on the right side of the picture it's stora skog fell and on the left side it's cylinder fell and the most active vents are east of cylinder fell at the south end of the fissure then they have released a new flow picture for the gas pollution. They are saying that there's considerable uncertainty in the concentration of the gas pollution. They say the gas pollution is unlikely to reach the capital region of Reykjavik because there are strong winds. And as you see right now, it looks quite good that it's just blown out into the sea. So how much magma is still coming out of that fissures? The experts estimate that about 20 cubic meters of magma per second are probably coming up. So I think it's still fairly strong. The lava that is now emerging flows mostly to the south, but the movement of the lava tongue that's heading towards the road has been very slow and that's a good thing. But we know that lava lakes have formed along the defense walls where the lava is flowing towards the sea. And uh, if the edges break, then the lava can flow faster again. So that is something that needs to be monitored. So right now, the tongue of the lava is two to 300 meters away from the road. And from there, it's about another 350 meters to the sea. So that's why they're thinking that it's unlikely that the lava flow will make that distance in the next 24 hours. But if the eruption will continue with a similar activity that it has now, there is a chance that the tongue will eventually reach across the road and also into the sea. So we will have to see if this thing slows down. It hasn't as of yet compared to yesterday. And um, a geoengineer said yesterday that the latest lava seems to be accumulating above and on top of the lava that has flowed Sunday night. So it's flowing over it as it seems. And then we also heard from the police chief in Sudorns. He has decided to not allow access that was planned to Grindavik today because he says the danger within the town limits in the town is still considered high. We just talked about it when we talked about the new hazard map. So 
heavy gas pollution has covered the Swartzengi area before noon today. That's why the Swartzengi power plant had to be evacuated after the gas meters had warned of high pollution levels, but then it was safe to return there in the afternoon because they need people there to run that power plant. It's, it creates electricity and hot water and heat. So people have returned, so that's a good thing. So let's talk about my friend the Blue Lagoon again because, and that is so great guys that you are reporting what you have experienced for the ones of you that have been there on vacation that have been to the Blue Lagoon. And I'm. this is really, really interesting. So um, one viewer wrote me that, um, she saw my video and then she said it comes unfortunately 30 something hours too late and i'll get into this she wasn't really aware of what is happening so she said i've been there at the moment of the last evacuation and eruption i was really sure the geothermal activity happens where the power plant is i think most of us the tourists who voluntarily go into the blue lagoon didn't think that there's a risk or that we are bathing under an immense reservoir of magma would I do it differently? Maybe not, but at least I'd be aware of the risks. So mother nature can be really unpredictable. So besides the evacuation drill that is told before we go into the lockers, they should also talk about the geography of the place and the real active risks we take. Anyway, visiting Iceland was really great, experienced maybe some other lagoons next time. So from how I take this is, and I've said this before, because if you look at the website of the Blue Lagoon, um, I have criticized that they only talked about earthquakes and not volcanic eruptions. They have changed this recently, but it's still not on the front page. So when you want to book your stay at the Blue Lagoon, you are not really aware of this. So of course, right now it is closed and it says that, but when they were open, there was just a small banner that says all facility are open, read more. And of course, if they're open, you don't why would you read more? They should say there is a risk involved, read more. And that's what I've been saying because I read in the comments, people are saying, well, people know the whole risk and if they're the thrill seekers, it's their own problem. And I always doubt it. I said, if there are some people from other countries, do they really know the risks if they go to that website and if they're booked their stay? And, and many of them, they arrive there and then they're like, whoa, what? But you know, that viewer, she said that they didn't even tell them the risks where that blue lagoon or what it sits on right so i think this needs to be changed so that people can make a more educated decision if they then still decide they want to go to the blue lagoon okay that's fine right but you need to tell the people what's going to happen and we've seen it in the video that has been released from the icelandic morning newspaper mbl yesterday from one of the guests they were just filming themselves while they were running out of the Blue Lagoon and how scared their faces were. And MBL also wrote, the people were very scared and it was a hectic, they were running outside, right? And you know, people should know about that risk and you know my opinion. Is it necessary to always wait to the last second and then really have an emergency evacuation again? Or if we know the magma chamber is filling up at a, a rate about 10 million cubic meters where we always have seen events, maybe evacuate proactively or not evacuate, close the place down, right? So people were actually in the pool when the eruption happened. Um, I've mentioned it in, in yesterday's video. So I wanted to let you know about this because there's still people out there. They're saying, oh no, it's not that. It wasn't like that and you're wrong and blah, blah, blah. So these are reports of people who have been there directly. We've heard it yesterday. One viewer's son was in the pool when the sirens started. So he, he, he left his swimwear there. He didn't even have time to put on underwear and he was just running outside to the parking lot. So guys, 
Let me know what you think. This is my latest update. There'll be another update because there's other things happening. And guys, thank you so much for watching, for your support. I'm out of here. I see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.